I'm just talking about your backdrop. Oh, what's what's my backdrop? Oh, what <laughs> the fuck? Some kind of weird office space. Why did it just do that? Don't, don't fucking know. take liberties. I thought that that there was what had been keeping you busy. Oh my god! Imagine you have definitely <laughs> done backdrops before. <laughs> No, because in the age of um, Zoom and um, meetings now, I'm a very au fait uh, with this shit, and mm. I would never do it. Now I now I view it as tacky. Also, what does au fait mean? Uh, like competent with, like up to date on. Oh, so I used it correctly. Yeah. That's always a win. It actually, weirdly, looks like you've still got a fake background on. Something about your, like... Uh, low res camera and like pixelated black top makes it look like you are still on a green screen and that's you're not at a bedroom <laughs> okay mate um i just got here i i ran here basically in the car essentially not a criticism and it, it was, was a, a fucking criticism it was a webcam criticism you just slipped in the your lo-fi camera i would yeah. never say that about it's your not your laptop you hate that computer don't act all high and mighty. I know the full story. This is your work okay. laptop. All right, just for the record, I want everyone to know that I love this laptop very much. <laughs> um, and also, you look very pretty low res yourself. And that, <laughs> now you're going to say that's my low. That's low, real low res computer. That's real personal, and I would thank you if you could keep things a little bit above board here. I'm I'm above I'm above board, Pete. That's what they call me. <laughs> that's because I don't know you. Because I got your name wrong. Everyone yeah, who knows correct. you definitely calls you below the belt, Michael. Below the belt, Bob. <laughs> Again. Rest in peace, Bob. Uh, oh, yeah, Bob Parr. Mm. Mm. Nice you never guy. liked him, did you? <laughs> <laughs> I never trusted him. Never liked him. Uh, what was his role? He was, he was actually big news. Like, no one's going to care about this. But anyone that was listening, yeah. anyone that's listening who used to work at Wallace, yeah, uh, will know Bob Parr is a very... Well, he was, nice. he was like very well respected in that specific industry of cinema and independent yeah. cinema in Australia. He worked there for like 50 years across various roles, I think. So yep. yeah, very cheeky nature, didn't he? He was, he was one of the most fun, like higher ups out of, he was probably the nicest guy out of head office back when we were working at, at Wallace. Well, it was, that's a low bar, but yeah. It, well, exactly. But I, it, even so. Low... Bob Parr, hey, Bar. That sounds a, like Cockney rhyming slang. Now, do you have um, daylight saving time over there? We do, and it ended on the same day as you, so we're still two hours apart. Thoughts on, on daylight saving? I saw you made a post about it. Yeah, interesting, eh? Because there's been a bit of this movement of like, why are we still doing this? And then The Guardian came out with this quite pronounced um, op-ed from some scientists saying that like the consensus, it, it was positioning it as a, as a consensus. I'm not sure if it is or isn't, but this guy definitely believes that it would be a disaster if we had permanent daylight savings time. Um, I think we've talked previously about how the jet lag effect of changing the clocks does have manifest um, effects on the health system and on car accidents and on mental power and everything in that transition right. period. We've, we've talked about that, which has been studied. Um, but then the flip side of it, which this article espoused, it's on the, um, the Facebook page if you want to go read it, but I'll link it in the chapter title of the podcast as well if you want to click through, was saying that the psychological effects of only ever being in daylight savings would be crazy um, and it would be worse the further west you were in a time zone because the example given was that some places already you wouldn't even have sunrise till 9 9 a.m 9 30 or something like that and if you added daylight savings then you would be getting up in the darkness and having like two or three hours of darkness before like while you're at work and on the clock and then at the end of the day you might theoretically get a little bit more time out of it but that the the consequences of to the body which is so heavily um, reliant on circadian rhythms is 
like your body does not like waking up in the dark. The body uses light to wake itself up, to regulate its things like diet, like your hunger levels are dependent on your circadian rhythm, which is dependent on your exposure to sunlight and all that sort of thing. So mm. if you are spending much of your year getting up in the darkness and theoretically before sunrise, then it would actually fuck with you as well. So <laughs> I guess I, I guess there's strong arguments on either side. How do you feel about it? Do you want to get rid of it or do you want to keep it? Uh, I, I, uh, I to and fro, I, I slip and slide on this. Um, no, I like that. the, everyone likes the extra um, hour of sleep because that's always fun. You know, you wake yeah. up and you're like, I feel really well rested. And you look at the um, clock, it's like, it's only 8.30. How's that? I'm so productive. Yeah. Um, but then just, like, it's so immediate. Like, I had my first, like, day of work the day, like, the day after Daylight Savings switched over. And it just, like, 5 p.m., it's, like, already black. And it's like, no, yeah, now winter. Now it feels like winter, yeah. And that's, that's shit. And uh, no one then, likes no one likes going into daylight savings either, where you lose that hour sleep in the morning and you wake up and you're like, oh, why? Oh, I feel shit. Why? And it's but it's all it's all swings and roundabouts though because you get the you get the extra hour sleep, but then you go into darkness. Mm-hmm. Uh, uh, but then you get the you know you lose an hour of sleep later in the year, but then the days you know feel better. So it's it's good that it's that way around. But I don't know. I just like the. I like it when things change. You know, okay. a big, so I'm this a big suits changeling. your restless. Um, yeah, restless I reckon mindset. add a couple more daylight savings in there. To be okay. honest, just, just mix go, it up. As in, double down. So like halfway through yeah. summer, add another hour in, and keep going or two ahead. Like, or do you want to flip back halfway through and then, and then go into it again? Or well, even if we just have one crazy ass week. Where we're just like, all right, we're jumping four hours ahead, <laughs> and then we just live like that for a week, and then we just switch daylight back. savings. Like, that could week. be fun. Day- daylight savings turbocharged. But I don't know that that, that works be because your body still needs to adjust. You can't like just call it now nine a.m. and be four hours ahead and expect everyone's body to be like, yeah, great, I'm awake, I'm ready to do this. It won't. Well, you can't adjust. Uh, well, let's 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 test it. Let's push our bodies, you know, and our and our sleep cycles to the max, to well, the max. There's no one stopping you from doing it. Yeah, that's a good point. Maybe I should. I'll run it past. Just go the, independent. Uh, the boss. Yeah, but you're saying that the the body. So the natural daylight, the natural time for us to wake up is during sunshine hours, which yeah. is what. Just think back to being Here, animals, right? If you're an animal, oh, if you're a caveman... It doesn't take much. No. You are waking up when the sun's up, right? Like, that's the natural rhythm that our bodies are used to. And that is also a variant across the year. Like, in winter, you're a little bit more hibernatory. You are maybe sleeping in a bit longer, having a shorter day, and then going back when it's dark, right? That, that's why it's, uh, you know, yeah, a, a shorter window. And then... On the flip side, in summer, there's more sunlight around. Your body operates, you know, it keeps you awake while it's sunny. And then when it's dark, you you, you retreat. So that's why they added in there to to sort of better align you with it. Yeah. Yeah, I guess so. But I I only recently just put it together that in summer there's more light. Like, I just thought it was the same all year round. Like this, you get the same amount. The days are as long, like the days uh-huh. of sunlight, are as long all throughout the year. And then daylight saving just comes in and says, "No, no, thank you." Right? Yeah. No, you'd be getting more sunlight. That only yep. just occurred to you. Yeah, literally the other day. Yeah. Yeah. Interesting. Do you... hmm. I mean, technically, the amount of sun that is or light that's coming from the sun is constant year round. But the Earth's position and orientation is not, that's for sure. Yeah, and the Earth is round. I'm glad that you finally come, come to terms with that after you know, years of your you... obstinate um, flat Earther mentality. Uh, for April Fools that we had the other day, I follow the Flat Earth Society on Facebook because I, I'm a believer. Um, and they, for April Fools, no. they just posted 
they just posted a photo of the earth, like the round earth like the normal photo of earth <laughs> that we all reference they just posted that and i was like that's hilarious like they're just so confident in their or maybe they're just fucking with us deeply i don't believe these guys yeah i was gonna say are they legit or is it like sort of a one of the what's the rule the they're just trolling where you can't tell it if anything is sincere i can't remember yeah do you think that they're real i i can't you can't but like i don't know i'm sure there's some out there but i you get the feeling that these guys are just some of these guys are trolls i'm sure some of them probably are yeah just like me welcome to deep thought everybody how are you doing hope you're doing well this is a podcast in which we discuss the matters of the universe that affect us here on little old earth with a wry smile a glass of wine and uh, 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 the love between friends. Sitting through the internet with me, my friend Michael. Hello. Hello, Nick. Hello, um, everyone. Good evening. Thank you. And my name's Nick. Wait, you said that already. <gasps> Foreshadowing. Foreshadowing. Classic um, device. Yes. How How's it going? How are you? Where did you race well, into from today? Well, I was working off site today i was working about uh, an hour or so outside of the city so so two kilometers two kilometers uh yeah um and so i yeah i raced home from um you know you know basically country victoria because you know you know i don't like to make my uh my sweet little nicky wait you know you know i don't I like know. to make my you didn't make me wait you know, i don't like to make my uh my little prince late. It is, it is late and I'm, you know, I'm thinking about you literally every second of the day and Aww. I'm always, I'm thinking of you, not only what you're doing and what you look like, but also <laughs> what I'm wearing, what, 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 what you're eating. wearing and, and what you're thinking. Um, and if you're thinking about me and also it's, what you smell I have to like. project two hours into the future because basically you're living in the future. Mm. Have you ever thought about that? All the time. Cause you're, it's. Because you live in New Zealand, yeah, and it's nine p.m. nine oh seven there, uh-huh. and for me it's seven oh seven, which is less than nine oh seven. That's how the numbers work. And yeah. so you live in, you see things before everyone else. Yeah, yeah, it's true. We get, um, you know, when TV shows debut, we get them hours before the rest of the world. You know, an international dateline sort of thing. Like we'll be we'll be seeing movies before everyone else. We'll be seeing TV shows, listening get, to songs. You get. You get the sun before everyone else. Um, uh, <laughs> in the day, in the daytime. <laughs> sure. Yep. Yeah. Depends how you look at it, I guess. <laughs> yeah. I mean, it's kind of like it's always on is the thing. It's always on somewhere. Yeah, I've always yeah. said that. Yeah. I've always said that. You have always said that. Um, yeah, how was your, um, your expedition? Was it a good day? It was fine. To be honest, it was like one of those... Uh, corporate kind of workshop things um, where we conference talk about stuff. yeah values and um and i'm never good in those situations um, you know yeah i can't really uh i can't really take it seriously does it feel um, s- like such a weird cliche to be in that kind of environment that your your body re- like repels it it does it really does um, I mean, it's pretty good. Like as far as I've been in a few of these, a few different work environments, but, and this one's pretty good. So I shouldn't be uh, too uh, complainy, but it, my body does, as you say, like just reject it. And I just want to make jokes and I want to like make fun of the presenter and stuff, but you know, that's not, that's not nice. And I'm trying not to be, you know, not nice. You're trying, trying not, not to, to be. Not I'm not nice. to be not nice. Yeah, there must be a better way to say um, it. But I bug it no. if I can work it out. <laughs> I will never know. Um, <laughs> but you know, I I, I I I play along. Yeah, that's good. Uh, yeah, and and how are you? Are you excited to see uh, your your best friend in the entire world, Allah? Me, Allah. Again, you're not using these words. You had Ofe down, but you didn't yeah. get Allah right. Um, I'm not okay with Allah. <laughs> Damn Praise it, you Allah. got it right again. Um, what does Allah mean? 
It's uh, Italian, right? A la, it was French, right? As in, in the manner of. Yeah, yeah. No, I think I used it correctly. You just didn't understand me. That's probably but true. I'm in the manner of your best friend in yeah. the entire universe. Yeah. <laughs> um, anyway, to answer your question, I am getting excited about going home. So we're recording this Tuesday on Friday. I have flights to Adelaide. But I've also got this weird, like, uh, increasing anxiety about it. Because in order to get onto the plane, you have to do a COVID test. And, and in, in order to get into the country, you have to have a, a COVID test, a negative COVID test. Um, and so you can either do a PCR, which can be up to three days before the flight time, or you can do a RAT, which is 24 hours before. Um, so we've got a RAT booked. You have to do it at a chemist who can then like medically administer it and, and I suppose increase the likelihood of an accurate test result and then print up documentation mm. and, you, and you bring all that with you and you bring your digital um, passenger declaration forms and all of these new like um, paperwork bureaucratic things, your vaccination records and all these kind of um, you know modern accoutrements needed for your travels. But there's something like ominous about having to like get over this medical hurdle before you can get on the plane and so yeah, i'm totally i'm just like and and of course in in the new zealand context we've had a big covid spike it's it's declining but there's still you know 1500 new cases a day in canterbury which is around around me here so i just i'm i'm nervous i just don't want to get covid i don't want to test positive for covid in the next like two days because mm. then if i do I can't get on the plane. I, lo- I lose the money for the tickets. I lose that week of the holiday and everything. You lose the money on the tickets? Yeah. What do you do? What? I thought they were the airlines, maybe it was no, just not, not They were it... very flexible. Yeah, they might They might try and wiggle it. But um, uh, like the tickets that we bought were were non, non-flexible non ones. Um, and, oh, come on. And so the... if you tested positive, just incidentally to that i'm not sure that they'd be entitled to do anything to help you out so oh, that's rich that's, it is that's unfair it's pretty rough um particularly given that you're you declaring that you tested positive is actually protecting the staff and other passengers on your plane right um mm. so you're doing you're them doing a, the right a, thing. A, a service but yeah so that's this weird sort of psychological barrier where i once I get through Thursday and I do the tests and it's negative and I submit all the paperwork because then you have to send off the negative results and your vaccination stuff and get that at, like respondent um, or yeah. acknowledged, then I'll be like, okay, shit, I'm going. Oh, fuck, this is cool. This is a holiday. This is great. You know, KC's coming home for the first time. Like, then I'll be excited. But right but now... But then you could get it on the plane. Well, that's it. Yeah, you're never you're never safe, and also there's more COVID in Adelaide and Melbourne, so you're never safe, Nick. That's I don't want to thing. ruin your holiday, but, but like if I get you... it when I'm over there, at least I'm over there, right? Like I just want to be able to get there. Um, sure. So, you know what you should have done. What's you that? know what the smart thing to have done would have been. Well, I've been bubbling have... for like the last two weeks, like tr- really trying to avoid. Like, you should have done. You should have done the opposite. You should have actively tried to get it two weeks ago. So then your body would have just shut it down and then you'd be like, I, and then you have the immunity. That's what you should have done. Uh, maybe. But the, um, that would have been smart. Like we're still seeing like deaths every day, 20, 20 odd deaths a day. Um, and plenty of them are in their thirties. Like they're not, it's still not a disease I really want. No, you'll be right. Take it from me. I'm not a doctor. Yeah. But I reckon just based on intuition. Yeah. You'll be fine. Okay, well, thank you Ca- for that. Casey, on the other hand. It's definitely the no, opposite. It's definitely the it. opposite. Not going to make it. <laughs> I'm not the it's one the who case. had, um, I had like asthma as a kid and the, the poor lung function and all that kind of thing. It's going to fuck me mm. up. Casey just does, he'll endure anything. He, he doesn't even feel pain. No, I think your asthma made you stronger. And honestly, it's my favorite thing about you. Oh, my, my history of, of uh, lung lung conditions. Yeah. Oh, that's sort of a backhanded compliment. I think I've, I swear I've told you that before. No, uh, no. Yeah. Um, speaking of backhands. Yeah. How's that for a segue? Um, that's really, that's one of your best. 
I don't want to talk about this too much, but did you have any particularly... Um, you don't want to talk about it. I thought this is the only thing we we're talking about. It's so... We are so late in the game. By the time I edit I this, it'll be over two weeks. <laughs> I know. Fuck. Like, yeah, I was sick of talking about this fucking slap, like, within a day and a half. Yeah. But... What was your first reaction? So, I watched it live. Did you? Were you actually watching it? I was watching it at work. <laughs> um, and... I was kind of, it was like on in the background and what I saw was Will Smith saying, I turned, so I turned to the screen when I heard uh, a fuck because I was like, that's that not, doesn't happen. even though I was kind of half paying attention, I was like, someone say fuck at the Oscars. That's like something. And then I turned around to the screen and then he was on his second out your fucking mouth. And I was like, that seemed real. Yeah. And then I immediately jumped on, uh, I don't know, Twitter or Reddit or something and started to like see this trickle feed coming through about uh, about how what just happened. Just slapped. And then I watched it and immediately I thought it was, I knew it was real. Yeah. Immediately. I know, I know some people thought it was like fake because it, sounded, it looked fake or Chris Rock took the hit so well, but like. It was like, it was the most shocking moment, you know, probably I've ever seen on, on live te- television. It, it, what about it is Janet so... Jackson's boob coming out? I mean, that was, that was when I discovered myself sexually. So <laughs> I only had so positive was also feelings shocking. towards that. Yeah. Yeah. It was shocking in a good way. Um, <laughs> but yeah, I mean, like this was, this is just insanity. Yeah. This, this I mean, w- w- do you have a take? Because you know, no, I don't. Uh, is it the same as everyone's? My my, it, it, I I feel like a every take has been said. B every joke's been said. My only take is is I suppose just the the aftermath thing. Like I I found it so weird that after doing that, he was just still hanging around like that. Yep. that they didn't kick him out and it's emerged that they asked him to leave and he refused and they so they just like gave up and let him stay there okay oh all right well uh, i guess no and like that's the weird thing to me um what what i th- think is interesting is i've heard um judd apatow talk about it on uh jim and sam i think but he was like he had a good kind of breakdown and, and like a kind of um like industry inside knowledge about this stuff because they were all speculating on like them, they asked him to leave, and maybe they're just spineless or whatever. But like at a high level at the Academy Awards, they would have just frozen. And also, they are on. So they cut the feed. That's one thing. But also, they are. This is live television. So I think at some point they in the states they cut to commercial, but in Australia and Japan, which yeah, is why we have that we. footage in the yeah. first place. Yeah. Um, they. They didn't cut the feed for whatever reason. Um, but they would have just, the people who are in charge of making that decision would have just frozen. They would have just been like, okay, well, someone's got to know, by the way, that Will Smith had won the Oscar for Best Actor. Yeah. So they are faced with the decision of kicking out uh, their one of their you know shining moments of, of the Oscars uh, with a timer on them and not a long timer a 90 second to two minute timer. So they have to make that decision in the moment and maybe they ask him to leave. By the way, who knows if that's true? I mean, with the Academy say, has said that, but you know, sure. But like, what, what does he say? No. And then just sits back down. And they're like, uh, I guess we just let him stay. Well, and that's the question then. Do you, if he says no and sits down, do you call security and you say, escort this man from the premises? And then that's on fucking camera? Like, yeah, potentially creating a scene. Then it's a whole scene. Yeah. And I, and I sympathize with the, the people who are in charge of making that decision. It's very easy for us to, with the um, hindsight and the days post event to reflect. I mean, it's not like everyone and immediately knew what the right thing to do was at the time. Like we have had days to reflect on it 
and then once other opinions start to form it like come like it's interesting to see the wave of of opinions coming through like okay it, and develop so they and i'm not saying that this is like a this is more open and shut and black and white than a lot of other things but it was interesting to note the development of okay this is the collective right opinion that we should be taking and it kind of forms and it kind of forms on social well, there media was waves and- of it like the first of it was shock and then there was the jokes and the memes and then there was like a subsequent thing of of you know chris rock was saying this like tasteless joke about alopecia and so there was some of the the criticism there about like well chris rock shouldn't have said that and then there's the the rightful thing of of going through like well yeah but then the violence was never justified and so then there are all of these like initial sort of blame apportionment kind of processes and then the the next takes back were like cultural things where it was like yeah okay now we're talking about black men specifically and violence in that community and and then there's the Scientology stuff that was percolating. And then the, the yeah. feminist angle came out where it was like, we've never heard Jada say anything about it. How does she feel about it? And then there's the, you know, the medical or the disability kind of side of it, where it's like, okay, you, you're making light of someone with alopecia. And then all of these have like subsequent threads where someone dragged out a clip of Will Smith making fun of alopecia and, you know, like all of these yeah. like subsequent tendrils. And then by yeah. the time it gets to like SNL this past week, where it's seven days on, is that right? Seven days on, I feel like everyone was like, "No, nah, I don't need to <laughs> talk about." Did this. they not touch it? They did do it, but I think then the response to all of the skits was, ah, "This is this has been too long." Because oh, of course, right. in the middle, like all of the late night hosts are doing their thing. It's been percolated through the news cycle. You're getting the Guardian articles. You know, yeah, was, by the it time it gets fa- to a week later. Fatigued. Yeah. Everyone was totally fatigued because it was everywhere. But I understand it because it was shocking. Um, just a couple of things. Um, first of all, alopecia, disability? I don't it? know. I, I, you know, I, I throw that word out in, in, as a shorthand, but I'm not sure. She's, her, hair's, her hair's thinning. I mean, all right, sure. Uh, I get that um, beauty standards for women, especially in Hollywood, are different. Yeah. But uh, you know, I, 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 d- I don't want you to make a meal out of me saying the word disability. All right, sorry. All right, sorry. I, d- I, I wasn't making it out of you because I had. I just have heard that it, it's it's uh, a medical around. condition, right? Like it's not sure. something within her control. So sure. Um, and the other thing is that we don't even know if Ella- Chris Rock knew that she had alopecia. We don't know that for sure. Like he he could have just been making a joke about her short haircut. Um, which I think is an important distinction to make. Um, and I've heard other fellow comedians say that they know that Chris Rock didn't know that she had alopecia. Um, so yeah. he could have just seen, I mean, look, it was a shitty joke. It was just a, just a lame dad joke throwaway. Um, and yeah, I mean, I heard people saying like, oh, it's just a shitty joke. I mean, pff, yeah. Okay. It was whatever, but it wasn't, it's not necessarily, it wasn't necessarily malicious. Um, so I think, yeah, all the, all the sympathy and, um, and yeah, the sympathy should lie exclusively with Chris Rock. There's also another level, which is like the, of the two of them, you mean, I mean, some of, it of the two of them as well. Yeah. Oh, sure. Um, if you want a victim blame, um, I'm joking, but, uh, <laughs> <laughs> it doesn't but, make any sense, but Chris, so Chris Rock and, and, and Will Smith, both very powerful men, but it just had this, I think why everyone felt icky about it was that it, um, it had this, like, he, they've got the, the court jester basically making fun of, it seemed like the King, you know, he's sitting front row on his big night. Uh, it just had that vibe and just like the, the going up and thinking it's just bullying is what it is. It was just like. The power dynamic, I know we've talked about power dynamics in comedy before, punching up or punching down. This definitely seemed like punching up. Well, I'm, I'm noting that Will but Smith it wasn't, wasn't a, the butt of the joke. That's exactly the point, right? You're not punching up. Like, yes, it's Will Smith's night, but you, you, you're but like taking a But to me, the king and queen. Oh, yeah, I don't know. I wouldn't quite say punching up because you're making a joke about someone's physical appearance, right? 
And yes, mm. as you say, maybe he doesn't know that it was a medical condition or anything. But they had been very public about it, like they'd talked about it. But I'll, I'll give you sure. the, give him the benefit of the doubt and say, even if it was innocent, as you say, it's still just not a very good joke, right? Uh, but no, you no. know, but, uh, comedians also, tell bad jokes all the time. I suppose my exactly. interesting point of comparison is when you look at Ricky Gervais at the Golden Globes, and you think yeah. of the number of like ridiculous like insults to the face that he did over five five yeah. hosting gigs and you know a lot of people in that room didn't like it none of them jumped yeah. up and smacked him well well <laughs> they probably he, the deserve man... to <laughs> you think they deserve to yeah well he lost his mind like you he i know i know we won't go into this too much but i'm interested to hear what you think and just speculating, obviously, of what was going through his mind uh, when that happened. Because because this is, first of all, he's been chasing this Oscar for ages and lost a few times. Uh, and he knew that this was his, uh, he was in for a very good shot to win this time. So what do you think was going through his mind when he knows that this is one of the most watch televised events in the entire world on his big night what is going through his head that will inspire him to jump up on the stage in front of millions of people and commit a violent assault on someone i mean it's impossible to put yourself in someone's mindset part of me thinks and uh, you know there's been some chitter chatter about this online but it's it's all completely third hand and unsourced but like some people have said that he is like in in the scientology world just like kind of a crazy guy like he just a little bit unhinged already so he's Um, still a scientology guy now yeah 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 uh um so he's he's got that element going on as you say probably a lot of stress and and nerves and and things about this moment so that's that's kicking your body stayed up into it like a, a much more heightened place who knows whether he had a little sniff of something before going to the ceremony or anything else in the system which might aggravate that response and then well, scientologists are famously no drugs no alcohol though that's the interesting well, thing true um by the way so cute to say had a little sniff of something that's a euphemism <laughs> i don't want to like offend any of our younger viewers um <laughs> The, I don't think he sniffed a young boy. <laughs> well, maybe he did. I don't well, know what they do inside the told you these days. Um, the 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 other thing, and and this is this is uh, you know the the leftist woke line, but like it, it it does feel like toxic masculinity, right? Like someone well, it is. took a crack it at is. his wife, and he stood up to defend her honor which in some ways is chivalrous, but the response that he took was a physical abuse, right? So yeah. I, I feel like he's got some anger issues and, and masculinity issues and that sort of thing caught up in that. Um, well, I think you're totally right. And he's also been the butt of the joke with, uh, they've been like pretty open in, with their, you know, she was famously dating some young rapper. Yeah. So he was- Their open you know, relationship quite, stuff. And quite emasculated. It must have been emasculating- whether that's yeah. toxic or whatever, that yeah. must have been emascul- emasculating for him on some level, and and then we're getting into you know, you know, uh, black masculinity and and you know, yeah. alpha ness and whatever. Yeah. Um. So I, I'm sure a little bit of that was was uh, ticking around, and you know, everyone says that you know they've seen that clip of him laughing at it initially, and then Jada going rolling her eyes, um, and then he you know gets up, flips. you know, he flips, but then yeah. like how's how's fucking um. Denzel Washington <laughs> pulling him aside, and and this is I just found this so funny, and and because Will Smith referenced it in his speech, he's like Denzel Denzel pulled me aside before and he says, at your highest moment, that's when the devil comes, like who the fuck <laughs> who the fuck just has that ready to go just sitting fucking, there in the canister, fucking, it's yeah. just like. I mean, of course it's Denzel to say that, but it like, is. it's yeah. so like prophetic and profound and whatever. I'm like, he just got, he's just pulling out. He's got like a bunch of cards in his back pockets for like crisis <laughs> moments. Yeah. It just like, just sounds perfect for the moment. But yeah. 
what do you feel about his choice? Well, who knows what, how much was a choice and how much was a, a pressure to um, step away from the academy to rescind his membership, win an Oscar and then leave the organization. How do you feel about that? Well, it's a pretty soft, from what I understand, it's a pretty soft uh, off-ramp there. Like, he gets to keep his Oscar. He he just basically is excluded from voting from future films. That's my understanding yep. of... He still can go to the Oscars. He could be a plus one. Oscars. Yeah. Um, no, he still can get invited himself. Really? Yeah, he's just not a part of the voting... Voting block, cause, right. Because that's, that's, that's who votes for films the academy yeah um so i think it's a pretty it sounds nice i mean and it's a it's a nice uh it's a nice um negotiate uh, what's the uh, uh what's the word not negotiation like a uh, resolution compromise. compromise compromise yeah um uh, it's a nice compromise from his perspective and you know i'm sure his publicist is just you know I pro- i'm sure her, his publicist has developed alopecia as well throughout <laughs> the last week <laughs> <laughs> Or at least pulled their own hair out. and Yeah, um, voluntary alopecia. Yeah. Um, it's it's interesting um, because there's a, plenty of people who've won Oscars who are also like awful sort of abusive people. When you look at, you know, Harvey Weinstein. Name one. And Harvey <laughs> Weinstein, <laughs> Weinstein and um, like Jim Cameron and like plenty of other people on the books who've done shitty things, Casey Affleck, mm. you know, there's a whole, there's a whole litany of, of white men who've done, you know, questionable things who have been able to stay in as part of the Academy. Um, well, come on. Like why, why is the white men there relevant? I don't, I mean, well, there's probably the been mostly is... white men that have won. Yeah. You know, but that, no, so... we're talking about that's, we're talking about people who've who've done, you know, un uh, undignified or abusive or violent behaviours, and are s- uh, still part of the academy or still haven't had their um, awards stripped or anything like that. But the person who's been getting all this heat for it now is the black guy. Do you think that that is because we are in an era now which is more aware of and sensitive to how those kind of behaviours can be perceived and, and with an expectation that there be consequences for stuff and it just happened that the person who first triggered this discussion was Will Smith? Or do you think that there's a, a racial um, element in, in, in that as well? I think the whole racial element take on this is bs i think that the reason why this has happened to will smith is entirely because of the fact that he hit someone on fucking live tv (laughs) at the fucking oscars when it's like on the actual show i mean yes i agree there's roman polanski and you know casey affleck is arguable i mean these 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 the their, their sins, in inverted commas for I don't know why, have taken side take, taken place outside of that. So that is that is for that's a separate that's a separate issue. That's fair. I think this is this is this is a black man here and another black man. I think it's 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 irrelevant. They're, the races are irrelevant. And I mean, can you imagine if if a white man had hit Chris Rock, it would have been ten times worse. <laughs> yeah, it would have. Wouldn't it? It would have. Imagine if fucking Bradley Cooper got up there and, and slapped the shit out of Chris Rock. I mean, he would have I mean he he would have had no chance. He would have been lynched. So oh that's a bad that's a, that's a poor choice. No, can, no, can, <laughs> <laughs> can, <laughs> right, can. We can do it we can do a retake of that if you want. Can you imagine if you're gonna leave both in, aren't you? No, no, I won't. Can you imagine if Bradley Cooper got up there and, and slapped the shit out of Chris Rock? It, he would have been persecuted. <laughs> Crucified? Crucified. There go it is. For it. Go, come on, third up. take. Here we go. Just leave this all in. Can you imagine if Bradley Cooper got up there and hit Chris Rock? He would have been... Crucified. Cancelled. Yeah. Cancelled. Yeah. Yeah, whatever. Um, yeah, crucified the original council culture. Yeah. Well, that's uh, oh gosh, you're setting me up with so many nice segues at the moment. Um, 
because the other thing that happened just yesterday was Louis C.K. won a Grammy for Best Comedy Album uh, for yeah. his first special after re-emerging in the wake of his uh, sexual assault and mm. and was awarded a Grammy for it. Wasn't sexual assault. Why was it not sexual assault? No. We've been through this. It was sexual uh, indecency or something. It was, why, was, the, the, why was it not sexual assault? Because he asked permission every time. This is what this is always gets conflated. He asked permission every time. the The issue with Louis is that he, it was a the power dynamic. It was like your boss asking if you can pull your dick out. I yeah, guess. Which, but if you're still see, being shown something you don't want to see in an environment in which your consent is is um, pressured and not voluntarily given. And why is that not sexual assault? Well, why is it not voluntarily given? Because of the power dynamic that you just talked about. Because you're in a position where you're either too shocked or too um, uh, reliant on his being in his good graces for your own career or, or you know, even your own sense of personal safety that mm. you don't um, have the complete free Feel will like to say yes say or no. no. Yeah, I'm. I regret saying the but the boss thing because it's not like that. I think that um, yes, I think it was inappropriate, definitely to to ask. Um, but I I also think, and you're not going to buy this, but whatever. I think that comedians exist in another uh, world, honestly, and um, they say things and they do things. And I'm not saying that all <laughs> comedians whip their dick out and and are sexually inappropriate. But I do think they do exist in a, in a in a world that's uh, a, a level, an, an, another level from ordinary civilians, and so you'll hear them say shit and do shit. And I think that's where like, look, that's where this is probably coming from. It's a more chaotic world than than where like you know if you're. But he's just not doing living, this as a working. joke, Michael. He's not doing it to be funny. He wanted no. to jerk off on him for its own sexual satisfaction. But I'm, what I'm saying is that it's not happening in like a boardroom. It's happening in a green room. Yeah, but I mean that's still a workspace. Sure, I mean, but you, I mean, as a comedian, you're not going to think about it as a workspace. Like, of course in, you in are. Traditional sense. You're not going to think of it as an office, but it's still where you go to work. Have you listened to like any of the women talk about this from their perspective? Like, there was a a um, Jen Kirkman had quite a. Um, powerful uh posts today or yesterday about it um in which she was explaining how furious it made her and how um angry she was at, at being at literally what what we were just talking about at at this happening in your, her workspace where she goes to work and this shit can happen and it happens to all the women and the shit that they have to deal with like go and listen to them talk about the way they see that environment. Don't just listen to the men who take advantage of it and their perspective. Yeah, I mean, that's it. a fair point. That's a fair point. And, yeah, if you send it to me, I'll, I'll listen. I'll um, um, re- um, remind me to do it after the pun. Sure. Yeah, and I probably do need to be more sympathetic to that. I just, um, I have a, as we've discussed many times before, I, I feel like on the spectrum of uh, Me Too, that Louis is not, um, he's no Harvey, he's not a Harvey Weinstein. No, and I've and, never said that he, he was. Um, and I just feel like people, there's also, he, look, yeah, I know people didn't accept his apology. But he has acknowledged it. I know that people. What was his apology? Making, he, I can't remember off the top of my head. Are you talking he about the initial. When he admitted yeah. it, the first, you yeah. know, four, four, five years, four years ago when it first came out and then he posted that thing saying, yes, I did do these things. Yeah. Has there been any subsequent apology or anything I'm not aware of? Don't think so. Yeah. Was that not a good apology? I can't. I remember it being okay. I, I remember that it was that the strength of it or the, 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 strongest part of it was the fact that he didn't mince words about it. He admitted it outright. Um, so that, that as well, like it was frustrating to see in, um, 
I think it was the Hollywood Reporter. The headline was Louis C.K. wins wins first Grammy Award for, you know, in the wake of sexual misconduct allegations. It's like it's not allegations. If if there's anything that all of us on both sides can agree on, it's that he did these things, right? It's, yeah, it's but allegations real... is a legal term because he hasn't been, you know, he hasn't been prosecuted. No, they're not using it in a legal sense though. But they have to. They're a publication. They have to. No, don't they? No, because he's said it himself. It, it, he he admitted the conduct. There's it's not an allegation because that implies that it's un un uh, it's re- uh, denied or refuted or or up for debate. We're not in a legal context. Yes, you can't slander someone or libel someone, but this is a behavior that he's admitted to. He put out a statement, so it's not sure. it's not allegations. It's things that he did. Sure. So the headline is first Grammy given to the guy after his sexual misconduct, <laughs> you know? Sure. Um, yeah, misconduct. Well, I found it interesting. I saw all these articles saying, um, and they're from the, you know, it was like Rolling Stone and Consequence of Sound or Film or whatever, saying um, uh, Louis C.K. wins Grammy after sexual misconduct allegations. So I guess cancel culture doesn't exist. I'm like, pfft. Come on, like he's been—he can't get a fucking job unless it's in his own. Like, of that's course not... it exists. <laughs> That—that's that, such a bizarre position to take. What do you mean he can't get a job except for all the jobs that he has? Well, they're all self-funded. Like they're saying, no, not self-funded. He's exist. performing gigs. He's getting paid. People are buying tickets. That off his own back. No, like he's not getting a film deal. He's not getting a show deal. Sure. It's, everything is by himself. He's, he, people want to see him, so it's just supply and demand. It's like, it's just what the market wants. Yeah, but he hasn't been cancelled. People are paying him money. But that's not what cancel culture is. That's not what cancel culture does. Cancel, <laughs> you can't... Well, uh, under well under those rules, you can't cancel anyone. If the, if the If the market wants the thing, then the market will get it. He's still like, doing I, the th- same thing he age, did... He's doing the exact same thing he did before the the uh, well, word came out, before the news. He doesn't have a Netflix deal, um, and he also can't get a film made. So, I mean, they're, they're two pretty big things. I mean, it, people just people just love his comedy that much. So, what are you going to do? Like, you you literally cannot stop it. And he's and it's it's only because we live in a day a day and age now that you aren't beholden to, um, if you want to get a comedy special made, you're not beholden to HBO or Netflix. Like you can just put it out yourself as he does on his website and then lets people take it if they want it, which they do. So cancel culture cannot stop you from working entirely. They can if you, if that's your, that's what you're relying on. Like if you're fucking Dax Shepard, like you're fucked. Like you, you can't do anything. But if you're Louis C.K. and you've got a, a product that people want, I mean, what are you going to do? <laughs> Wait, I don't understand that analogy. Why can Dax Shepard not work again Dax if he was cancelled? Because Dax Shepard's not producing his own content. Dax Shepard's got his he's fucking gonna... big podcast on Spotify, and he's doing films that you know with Sony or Fox or whatever. Yeah. So, Dax but if Shepard he's would... making his own podcast like we we're not working on spotify and we're making our own podcast what's stopping him if he gets quote unquote cancelled he can still make his podcast without anyone else like the example is of but it would it would undermine his entire living well i just picked i don't focus on dax shepherd because i just pulled that out of my ass like if you're some lower tier comedian let's just say that if you're a lower tier comedian that you're relying on getting a comedy special whatever you know you, you can't cancel culture can't Emit, like wipe you out if you have the following for it is what I'm saying. Yeah, isn't your argument that cancel culture <laughs> no, isn't my... real? No, it might. That's not. No, peop, these these publications were saying that cancel culture isn't real because Louis C.K. won an award for comedy. Yeah, but his his life. Has been. I mean, he's he's had the rug pulled out from under him. Yeah, but don't you think um, that so their their perspective on that is the fact that in a room and an audience, you know, voted on by his peers, an award was given 
by the industry to him, right? Mm-hmm. So it's it's his internal, it's his it's his it's his peers. He has been welcomed back into that group because they're the ones that gave him the award, right? Well, look, I'll give you this. Like, I did find it interesting that he won because in a room when, it, I mean, is the Grammys decided on by the peers? I think we worked this we out last We did look at this. I when think he got it nominated. Is, yeah. It is interesting that they decided to give it to him. I, I can only imagine, and this is just pure speculating from the hip, that people voted for him because they didn't expect him to win. Kind of like, you know, how the, the best picture or of the Oscars or it's always like the sec everyone's second best favorite film. Yeah. Um, so I, I, I imagine that it was like kind of the same thing. Like they didn't they're like, Oh no, it's like vote a donkey. Vote. So I'll, yeah. I'll, yeah, maybe. Um, but I can't imagine in, in that sort of industry. I mean, maybe I mean, the Grammys are different to be honest. It's possibly also the, um, the Oscars thing from about five years ago, the hashtag Oscars so white thing where there was this, institutional issue where the proportion of of voting members skewed very much to like an old white male demographic and they had to actively go away and be like okay we're inviting 12,000 new people of color women and everything and we're going to try and change our processes of who gets admitted and invited to try and right some of these you know cultural imbalances i have no idea what the um what the proportion of or makeup of people in the grammys are but if it's like most of the um, arts industry, I'm sure there's a predominance of men and of white men. So if perhaps the voting block was made up of more women or more, um, you know, minorities, maybe that vote would have gone a different way. And it's a reflection of the, um, the, the makeup of the Grammys voters. Well, yeah, I think it matters what the, I mean, yeah, I don't, I don't know. If it matters who votes, if it's other, if it's fellow comedians voting for the comedy, uh, I don't think it's that narrow. The, hmm. Well, that would explain it, to be honest, because com- comedians have a higher threshold for um, these type of things, I think. Mm. And they, it, I mean, I listen to numerous podcasts where they are friends with Louis, and he's in the mix with them again, working in the clubs and whatever. Um, and and male and females, and black and white, and Latino, um, and they it it just it does seem like the comedy world in the states has moved on from Louis, um, but it definitely feels like the the rest of the world hasn't. So I I if if it is if it is um, people from the music industry as a whole voting on this, I'm pretty shocked to be honest. But I watched all of those specials, and to be honest, it was the best one. So if you are able to separate the art from the artist, then uh, he, he, is the, he does have the best special. Um, I guess it's a separate argument or a separate discussion whether, he not, whether or not he should have been nominated. Mm. If he's nominated, he, has, he should be able to win. Um, yeah, that just true. should be fair. Uh, but whether or not he should be nominated is a different thing. Mm. Um. Yeah, I, I think that it may well be true that in the sphere of podcasts you're listening to and everything that they've sort of welcomed it back in, but I would suggest that there are probably other voices that you're not hearing uh, in that mix. Okay, I'm, I'm, look, I am, I'm, I'm aware that, um, that I probably have been less um, sympathetic and more got the blinkers on when it comes to this stuff, especially Louis and... Um, in talking to you and, and to other people, I, I do recognize that it would, I, 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 I just haven't sought out the other side of the story because of my love for Louis. Um, and it is kind of like a, like a, put your hands over your ears, la, 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 la thing. Um, it is also true that I can, I can separate the art from the artist. And I do think that is, that is a personal thing that I don't think yeah. people should, necessarily be judged for like you know i can still enjoy a woody allen film and i don't i don't think people who can uh should necessarily be judged for it but i i do also agree that seeking out the other voice um 
and not putting your hands over your ears is a necessary uh, thing to do if you want to be um, if you want to be sympathetic to victims and um, actually understand what they're going through mm. rather than oh I just like this thing you know so yeah. I, I I understand that speaking of understanding what your people are going through. Oh god, the segues! I'm so fucking on fire tonight. It You're is on fire, it is, my man. I am killing it right now. Um, Bruce Willis. Mm. Sad news about his aphasia, right? Um, yeah. But it puts it into to to keep on this award show theme. Like there was a category at last year's um, Razzies, right? Like the the worst films of the year which was the yeah. worst Bruce Willis performance. And that was a category entirely made up of five, um, you know, directed DVD equivalent, um, you know, low budget phone it in one day's work kind of Bruce Willis roles. And they made, yeah. they, they made this joke at his expense, you know, like, cause it's been well known for years that his, his commitment to a performance. He's has Nick seemed... Caged. No, I think that's totally unfair to Nick Cage. And, um, well, Nick Cage has had a Nick Cage essence. But Nick lately, Cage but... has done a whole bunch of random shit movies. They're, um, they're, they're, they're but, mo- movies for money. But he has, by all accounts from every director, 100% committed to the role in every single thing that he's done. Like, he's not phoning it in, even if he is doing jobs for money. Um, yeah. <laughs> but uh, but there was this, this definite sense that Bruce Willis was, was just disinterested yeah, in the job or not even trying. And so you had this whole um, narrative and then you had the Razzies like poking fun at him and then all of a sudden it comes out he's retiring because he's basically got a degenerative brain condition and he doesn't know where he is or what he's doing, which is just so incredibly sad. And you just think, fuck the Razzies. Like what a shitty, what a shitty perspective to take on art, right? Like I hate... Well... I hate those. I don't know if you've got any tolerance for them, but like the cinema sins YouTube shit where it's like, here's 101 things wrong with this. And they like stop and they point through a movie like frame by frame and be like, why is he standing over there when he's, you know, thing 102? Shouldn't he have access to that door? Didn't he just like all of this like petty bullshit? That like, that dismissive, snarky kind of bullshit feels so like mid 2000s like early internet culture and i just i have no tolerance for it particularly now that i'm trying to make my own stuff as well but i don't know what do you think about the whole thing well i wasn't aware that they were actually an award show i just thought they were like you said like just a a blog or something well there was there was an example and i can't remember who i should Maybe it was Halle Berry. Halle Berry turned up for and received a Razzie for Catwoman the same year that she was nominated for and won the Oscar. Well, that just goes to show how worthless the Oscars are. <laughs> but, um, but I think, I mean, I, I look, it's easy to kind of condemn the Razzies and for, like, being insensitive to people with a medical condition they didn't know i think it is a little bit tongue-in-cheek from what i know about it um but it is I, it did make me think that and it's, it's 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 kind of the same as when people die it's like people say all this shit about him uh, about people like you know um who's some of that shit like you know if rob schneider died or something you know he, he's he's the butt of most jokes these days but like, if he died, <laughs> what a statement! He's the butt of most jokes these days <laughs> in the world. Maybe universally, maybe a... the butt of most jokes is well, officially well, <laughs> Rob Schneider. Well, they certainly are in my household because yeah. he sucks. But um, <laughs> uh, bad example. I've got some. I've got one in there. It was Sandra Bullock, it actually, who accepted the Razzie and the Oscar in the same year. Right, right, right. But anyhow. For what? Speed. Uh, no, no. For Blindside, she won the Oscar and she won the Razzie for <laughs> All About Steve in 2000. Uh, no, in 2010. What was All About Steve? I don't know, but I feel like it had Steve Carell in. No, maybe that's just the name. <laughs> <laughs> I remember really didn't it, try very hard with that guess, did you? No, I, I had a real um, sense that it was... Maybe anyway. it was Steve Buscemi. Um, 
But yeah, like I do feel like we Bradley should... Cooper. Oh. Anyway, huh? oh no, it will. It sounds like no one saw that. And probably forget. It would have come out when we were at the cinemas. <laughs> Maybe like someone like um, oh, who was the guy in Ghostbusters who's now into UFOs and selling his own vodka? Dan Aykroyd, right? right? Like he's beloved in his day, and then now kind of just gone a bit weird or whatever. Or Chevy Chase, you know, like we hate on them now, but then if they die. We, all we see is the outpouring of, oh, Dan or Chevy was, you know, a great guy and he did this and this and this. So, like, as soon as people die or they have, like, the thing, like a bad thing happened to them, people are just like, oh, well, I'm sorry I said any of that. Like, shouldn't... I don't I know just if that's you true think, like, because, maybe- because I saw... Who was it that died just recently? Um, Shane Warren. No, I know that's your preference. Um Give me one sec. I can picture his face. William Hurt. William Hurt died oh, yeah. recently. And, you know, I'd always sort of liked him. He'd popped up in some good roles, good actor, great actor, in fact. Um, and then I saw all of the coverage, uh, much of which draw attention to his, um, the many people who'd um, accused rape and assault of brutality, oh, yeah. of beating him up, like beating physically beating people and, and like credible accusations from um, uh, like people across the, the years. And uh, like that seemed to come out and like, I hadn't heard of that before the moment in which she died. So mm. do you feel like we might actually be in a, um, in an era now where there is a little bit more, willingness well, to embrace the full picture like i feel like if chevy chase died there would be plenty of people talking about how unpleasant he was even if acknowledging his comedic genius well look we're talking about two different things we're talking about we're talking about someone who's assaulting someone or raping or whatever <laughs> sorry just to put that on william Hurt. Um, yeah. if that's not true um but like no, it is it is that, yeah right oh, i was a rape. um yeah. that's like different than being just a douche on set you know like I think that's just completely... If it's not a crime, it ain't worth your dime. Okay. All right. Um, but they're, they're, they're two different things, you know. Just I think Chevy Chase, he's an he's a absolute comedy legend, um, but I don't think he'll... I think, there, I think there will be, for Chevy, there'll just be, you know... Imagine if Chevy just got diagnosed with dementia or something, and then, you know, we saw, you know or Parkinson's or something, you know, we, we, we immediately switch from, from, um, you know, attacking him or, you know, making fun of him to, you know, celebrating. Well, there's his, always his sympathy for people having, life. having medical conditions, right? Like there's yeah, still but, a tragedy. Sure, but, but I, sure, I don't but we'd, think that but we'd switch, we'd switch from, from making fun of him to being, you know, Oh, remember when he did with, when he did Caddyshack or when he did, um, the, any of the other movies that he did? I don't vacation. I I don't feel like. Oh, yeah. Um, I don't feel like that the narrative about him is is so one dimensional at the moment. I feel like that is already the case that people are, you know, enjoying his films, enjoying his history of comedy, and also acknowledging that every single person who's ever worked with him has called him unpleasant or irritable or <laughs> difficult. Mm. Um, yeah. I don't know that it's it's so simplistic. I feel like it would be like if he if Chevy Chase died tomorrow, he there would be Twitter articles, uh, tw- uh, Twitter articles, Twitter posts linking to like funny performances he'd had across the you know the decades, stuff from Community, stuff from Fletch or whatever, and Fletch. then there would also be here's my story of when I worked with Chevy Chase and here's the thing that he did. And they would be memorializing him, but also talking about like the, the shitty thing that happened or the, the funny weird interaction they had. I feel like that would both come out. Sure. I mean, and, and again, and again, if it's going to be comedians doing it, that's like having talking shit about the guy who's a fellow comedian, but you're assuming uh, that's that, going to be funny. You're assuming that that was comedians. I'm, I didn't say comedians. It could have been anyone, like a director who worked with him, or you know, a member of the, um, you know, another actor who'd been with him who's not a comedian. 
Like, well, I just don't get. I don't get why people. Well, you, maybe you're right that they would do that, but I feel like it would be poor timing, um, and it's not very, not very um, nice to just bring that out now. But uh, this, we're getting away from the original Razzies thing, which was that um, that we shouldn't like we've been making fun by way of you know giving Bruce Willis Razzies. We've been making fun of someone who was actually tapering down because he had a medical condition should we be making fun of anyone in case they have a medical condition or in case they are going through something uh you know pretty life-altering yeah i I, sorry i thought you were going to make a point but you just brought us back to that area do you not have an opinion on that uh i wasn't prepared well why'd you bring us back there then (laughs) <laughs> because I just thought I just thought we should get. I thought you were finishing a point. Um, my this is why I don't my host. dislike my dislike of the Razzies is not out of an idea. That's not entirely unfounded. It's not predominantly on the idea that you don't know what someone's going through. So maybe the reason that that performance was bad was because, you know, their mum just died. And, you know, it, it doesn't hurt to be an empathetic person and to ask yourself, what's it, that other person's life going to be like? But the main reason that I find that the Razzie shit crass is just that it's like, it's again, it's, it's just not, not a, like an interesting or creative form of criticism, right? It's not a constructive form of criticism so what are you trying to do here like in any failed project there is almost guaranteed to be people who really fucking worked hard at it who sunk hours of their lives into it and then for reasons beyond their control the thing falls apart you know like every um failed blockbuster has had people who spent three years of their lives designing costumes and making sets and you know, actors who tried their best and then it falls apart in the edit or the budget fucks up or the the studio interferes and everything like that. It's just such a, uh, yeah, just like a snarky and un, uh, undignified way to make fun of that thing. Like, I guess, well, uh, I just don't yeah, know. They're not, going, they're not going for dignified though. No, but that's the <laughs> point. Like, what what is the, what are the... the Goal. I think it's just a bit of fun. It's a bit of fun. And look, yeah, I'm I'm with you. That it's like, and you're clearly now being a, a creator of. Um, do you do you call it content, Nick? Do you do you describe yourself as a content creator? <laughs> I um, suppose in a loose sense. I'm joking. It's the worst word in the world. Um, but words. yeah, as a as a as a creative person who's putting out uh, TV a TV Projects, show, would you say? Yeah. yeah. Episodes work um, writing yourself clearly coming at from a, from a sympathetic point of view. And I agree people who have put their heart and soul into things who, by the way, don't even know that it's going to be bad. Cause as you say, so many things can go wrong along the way. There are so many moving parts where you can have a good script yeah, and a good director. And then someone's off about the cast. And, and then that's the thing that, that ruins the movie. Like, there's so many things, and I'm totally sympathetic to that. But also, it's fun to laugh at other people, you know? <laughs> yeah, I suppose if it comes from, a, like, a good-spirited sort of place, that's one thing. But I just don't feel like that particular outlet. Like, I don't want to talk about the Razzies forever, but I don't feel like that particular outlet is really doing it in good spirit. It just sort of seems petty. They, they did. I did actually hear David Spade talking about it on a podcast recently, where he said he got. He was actually really hurt by a Razzie that he got, and he got, um, he got a, a Razzie for the movie Jack and Jill with Adam Sandler. Do you remember that? Uh-huh. Yeah. Where, where Adam Sandler plays he played a woman, his sister as well. Like, yeah. Played, and then David Spade did as well. I think in that classic comedy, you know, for you know, the twenty tens or whatever. Twenty eleven. Yeah. And David Spade was saying that he he won a Razzie for best for worst female lead or worst lit, worst female supporting actress, <laughs> which is funny. Uh, but yeah, no, the Razzies. Yeah, I don't. I don't know. I didn't think that they were a real thing. Yeah, 
I suppose you know to, to go back one step further, the Bruce Willis thing is is sad, right? Like mental mental disease and everything really does seem like a shitty way to end your life, right? So what's what's Fantasia again, or whatever? What does he have? Fantasia. Aphasia. Aphasia. Oh, that sounds kind of fun. Well, yeah, I'm not sure that you would enjoy it. Um, it's it's like a language damage. So it's an inability to comprehend or formulate language because of damage to specific Ooh. brain regions. So the Fuck. major causes are stroke or head trauma, like brain tumors, brain infections, or neurodegenerative diseases. So it's like you literally lose the ability to understand what words are and how to make sentences. And, and I don't know Ooh. if you read the report that came out the day after his announcement where someone had gone out and spoken to some of the directors and producers and crew on recent Bruce Willis projects to ask what the experience was like. Did you see that? Mm. No, I didn't. I'll link that to you too. It's actually in the chapter title of this. If you want to read it, podcast listeners, click on the chapter. Um, Can you sum it up? It is. It was basically people saying that he seemed like everyone that worked with him was actually worried because he seemed like he, he legitimately said, I know why you're here and I know why you're here, like pointing to a couple of people, but why am I here? Like real, like... Wait, s- so it's effect. it's like, is it like dementia? Yeah. So it's not just language, it's, no. it's his... his... His comprehension. And so he would have like oh, an assistant who was basically boy. there full time putting him in place and he would have someone with an earpiece, he would have an earpiece oh. in him and someone would say lines to him that he would just say out loud again. And then there were certain things where, like, there was a, a shooting scene where it had to be, like, I forget the exact um, coordination, but it was, like, he would stand, someone would say a line, and then he would fire the gun after she ducked or something like that. And the, they called action, and then he stood there and pulled up the gun and fired it before she'd said the line. And obviously it's blanks, you know, it's, it's theoretically someone's, you know, this is oh, a, Alec Baldwin's this not is producing. a rust yeah. thing. Yeah. But um, freaking people out because they're firing off the weapon when not expected. And so they would say, okay, sorry, Bruce, so this is the coordination. You stand there, she says the line, and then she ducks and you you fire the gun. And he goes, okay, okay, got it. And they went for another take and he did the exact same thing and he fired it way too early. And you're like, that's the kind of shit where, A, it's scary on set, but B, it's like you clearly, he's not recalling this stuff. He doesn't have the faculties anymore which is just that's yeah. so sad man like that's what that's what that's my biggest fear is just like just losing your sense of sense of reality or losing your ability to recognize people or do i mean i just i can't i can't think about it for too long honestly because mm. it is so it's the saddest thing in the world to me mm. Well, on that cheery well, note, if you've enjoyed uh, this kind of thing, there's plenty more episodes out there um, down in the old podcast feed. But you can also keep in touch with us with lots of other um, forms, and place lots of other lots of other. With, there, there's lots of other. We there's you can keep in touch with us with lots of other ways. Facebook.com nice. forward slash deep fort. There's the twitter.com slash deep fort for notifications. You can head to our Instagram for, I don't know why. You can go to Spotify or you can go to SoundCloud. You can send an email to deepfort at gmail.com and you can rate us on Apple Podcasts or your podcast player of choice. Get in there, give us a five stars. We'd love it. It would make the world a better place. As alluded to at the top, I am headed off to Australia this week, theoretically, hopefully. So it may be more like three weeks before our next podcast two or three weeks um so stay tuned um but forgive us if we don't see one on our regular schedule no i'm sure i'm sure the three people listening to this will be like no i i buy it i believe it you know you say you don't know why people go to instagram knowing that instagram is the only thing i handle about this podcast but what do we we put up a notification but do we have any Ugh. clips or content that goes onto it well i can start doing it again i thought you hated the clips so i stopped doing it you know well you know I actually i didn't hate the clips i don't know i mean i, just, I think you you're just a scapegoat kind of i'm lazy using me because you're lazy i i recently someone um, every now and then you get someone that um you know, you don't want to listen to the podcast, but they do. Do you ever have that? Someone we know that you don't want to listen to our podcast, 
not necessarily that we know or like you or you or I know, but not we as a collective. Sure. You or I. But you're talking about and someone then, listening to our podcast that you don't want listening. Yeah. And they said to me that so someone I listen someone I know listened to it and they said, um, so they listened to two episodes and I okay. really didn't want them to. <laughs> and they listened to two episodes and they said, um, so when you guys come up with the, how do you come up with the topics? Does Nick just, does Nick just decide the topics and then you just go along with it? That's what they said. They thought that you were just completely. That sounds like a criticism of, every... of me. It no, sounds like, I mean, oh, oh God, who picks this? Does Nick pick this? I mean, that's, that's you projecting there, but I, okay. I mean, I, in my own my projection, I was talking up. about, well, you know. You know, I, I do stuff, you know, I bring, I bring laughs. I bring, I bring content, you know, You're and I told them, creator. I said, <laughs> I said, you know, Nick's, Nick's one of these classic type A personalities, you know, mm-hmm. so I, I let auteur. him feel like he, ha- I like, I like him. I like to let him feel like he has control, mm-hmm. you know, from time to time, which I appreciate he, he, the, con- the control that he feels that he needs, you know, and so Nick will say to me, you know. I want to. I want to do this. I want to talk about robots again. And he'll be like, "You know what, Nick? That's a great idea. I don't <laughs> think anyone will be bored about us talking about artificial intelligence." Have you seen what my last for the fifteenth time? <laughs> <laughs> I think it'll be great. What's that? You want to do the editing again? You know what? You got it, big guy. You got it. You know what? You can do the editing this time. Edit it however you want, little man. Yeah. Um, I appreciate that, that generosity. <laughs> oh gosh! How did they, did this they like? Out? Did they like the thing though? Or was the genuine uh, takeaway like, no? Uh, no, it wasn't no. But I also am just so. It's like it, it's it's a weird thing. It's like when we do the podcast, I feel like it's just like <laughs> Dave Weber and fucking someone else listening. Um, like, I don't, I don't think about other people listening to it. I just like, I literally just thinking like, it's just like th- three or four people. Uh, and so when someone else listens to it, I'm just like, oh fuck. And like, uh, I'm like, oh, like I should probably, I, I don't know what to do. Like I, I should either, maybe that's bad that I think that, or maybe, maybe I should just, maybe that's good that I think that maybe I, maybe that's good that it's like, I'm just showing my true racist misogynistic self you know i'm just laying it all bare you know and then you're just reeling me in like a like a what's a what's a fish what's the type of like a do you know any fish oh yeah flounder you're floundering Mm. and we're reeling you in like a barramundi Mm, barramundi um let's let's wrap this thing up with a bit of science news how do you feel I feel positive about that. Why okay. are you me like that? Well, I was leaving space for the... Now I have to leave more space for the... Can you just leave me some space so I can get the jingle in, please? I'll give you some can space. Can you just give me some... Sp- Fuck. You moved can away you from just, me. I remember I, that. Fucking, you remember, I can't you believe moved to New Zealand. This you is... You moved away from me. Untenable. You know... Give me people some space. Keep move, people just keep give me a break me. so that I can... People keep moving to New Zealand away from me. And I'm starting to think that it's me. Play the jingle. (laughs) It's that time. Time for science news. Uh, okay, quick little science news to wrap this baby up. Tell me, Michael, has this ever happened to you? <laughs> Sorry, now that I, about 10 seconds after I said it, I just realized wrapping a baby up is a very strange and ominous and un- unpleasant kind of imagery. Uh, I've so, wrapped a babe. Yeah, I suppose you wrap them with nappies and things. Um, ben Christmas can let us know. Wrapping paper. Has this ever happened to you? You've eaten let's say a penny 
or like oh, a yeah. small rock and oh, yeah. it's got stuck in the gullet or it's traveled inside the guts and it's lodged you you've ate you've ate like a like a spinning top and it's oh, and yeah. it's in there and it's not coming out i've eaten a yo-yo before you've eaten a whole and, yo-yo and, and a oh, whole yo-yo and put it out and it was fine walk the dog it was digested as well which is weird oh christ um yeah well previously that would be a real problem and you just couldn't get some stuff out but now new scientist is reporting quote a robot here we are back on my bullshit (laughs) back on my bullshit a robot made of magnetic slime could be deployed inside the body to perform tasks like retrieving objects swallowed by accident let me send through this clip again. If you're playing along at home, click the chapter title and enjoy. Um, yeah, yeah. Another example of the robots taking our jobs. Yeah, this looks like a moving turd, but it is a magnetic slime, which is controlled by magnets outside the body, and which has the ability to grab things and pull them out of the digestive tract or other parts of the body. Um, So if you swallowed something by accident, it could actually be wiggling around inside you, loop itself around, magnet onto it, and then drag it out. Um, It can also, like if it's cut up into pieces, it can rejoin itself and become uh, like one creature again. Like it's quite a sophisticated little goop. Gross. Oh boy, why am I watching this? So, it's a robot slime. It's robot slime, magnetic robot slime. What's what's robotic about it? It's what's con- in it. It's it's mag magnet bits. Oh, God, I hate the future. I hate it. So this is my wanna... this is my question. If <laughs> if you've let's say you've eaten a yo yo. And the doctor comes into the office and says, "Hey, okay, we can we, we know it's stuck. You know, it's causing you some um, some bowel problem. You're not able to shit. You know, it's not going well. Um, what we need you to do is drink this slime robot, and then we'll just wiggle that around with some magnets on the outside of your belly. Get that thing right out of there. Oh, it's magnets. It's magnets." Oh, I didn't hear that part. It's magnetic slime. So they control it by magnets on the outside and okay. like coordinate it so that it works its way through, picks things up and then grabs and yanks it out. Would you want this thing going down your throat, picking something up and then dragging it back out of your mouth? Because I think I would just rather never eat again. Mm. I'm very trustworthy of magnets. I've always trusted magnets. <laughs> <laughs> almost too much um and so if it was just like a robotic thing that was remote controlled by some doctor or something yeah then i'd be like nah but now that i know that it's magnets i'm like yeah because i trust magnets and it's very it's very creepy because it it moves it moves like um like a it's like a frog or like a like a slug like it, like a Mr. Mr. Hanky or something from South Park. It looks like a, <laughs> it a does poo-poo. look like a poo. Um, but I mean, it's very unsettling. But if it, I don't, I wouldn't have to see it, would I? I don't know. You 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 might have to swallow it. I think the idea of feeling something in, inside you move would be the worst part. Like it would be, you'd feel it like Jiggling crawling around. up you if he felt because it would f- still feel alive to your body yeah and your brain so yeah. it would just feel so unnatural i i would want to have some serious morphine or um be unconscious for this yeah but you know if it did it what's it wait so what would it pull out like i don't um, know like a quarter or but, a top. but but plugs or something well they yeah you could just like you can just grab that from underneath no, but if it gets lodged. Yeah, I still feel like you wouldn't need a magnet robot slime. I think it's more like okay. digestive issues going down. Okay. I mean, you could try about... it. Have you ever you know, <laughs> put slime up your butt? 
I haven't. But what have, whatever happened to the old fashioned Yakult? Is what I want to know. <laughs> whatever happened to some? Yeah. Just a teaspoon of kimchi. It, I, I think it was it was probably that um, people didn't feel it was scientific enough. Like they're like, are there magnets in this? And the occult's like, sorry, mm. no, it's just it's it's acidophilus. Acidophilus circus, yeah. I don't know. I'm 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 you know I'm I'm ambivalent to be honest. But um, if it's gonna if it's gonna remove a a Game Boy out my out my digestive tract, then I'm all for it because we've all been there as well. We've got Pokemon Blue up there still, probably. <laughs> Again, you said up there, which really implies that you 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 shelved that one. Well, you never know. It got it got in there one way or the other. It, went, it either went up or down. Yeah, it's a real blastoise situation. <laughs> I was hoping to blastoise it out, but <laughs> and my my ass felt like a Charizard afterwards. Is that the hot one? <laughs> yeah. And you have a little squirtle. <laughs> squirtle. <laughs> oh, it's so silly now, Pokemon, isn't it? It's so yeah. silly. Still love Pokemon. Oh, I love Pokemon. Like, just the idea of it and not playing it. But yeah. yeah, you obviously. No one thought you would. Yeah. 